here's what happened. In the 1960s, yes. we were at war with the Soviet Union, Cold War, and a little bit of hot war over in Southeast Asia. So, we, are, we fear them because they put up Sputnik, which, by the way, people forget, was an emptied out casing of an intercontinental ballistic missile. And Sputnik it, it, it itself means fellow traveler, so it's all peaceful, but it was a, a, a ballistic missile hit without explosives. So that was a signal, and we freaked in America. So NASA got founded. on the fear factor of Sputnik. All right, so we then go to the moon on the fear factor that Russia will control high ground. Then we go to the moon, space enthusiasts say, oh, we're on the moon by 69, we'll be on Mars in another 10 years. They completely did not understand why we got to the moon in the first place. We were at war. Once we saw that Russia was not ready to land on the moon, we stopped going to the moon. This should not surprise anybody looking back on it. Meanwhile, however, that entire era galvanized the nation. Forget the war driver. It galvanized us all to dream about tomorrow, to think about the, the homes of tomorrow, cities of tomorrow, the food of tomorrow. Everything was future world, future land. The World's Fair, all of this was focused on enabling people to make tomorrow come. That was a, that, that was a cultural mindset the space program brought upon us. And we reaped the benefits of economic growth because you had people wanting to become scientists and engineers who are the people who enable tomorrow to exist today. And even if you're not a scientist or technologist, you will value that activity. And that, in the 21st century, are the foundations of tomorrow's economies. And without it, we might as well just slide back to the cave, because that's where we're headed right now, broke. tired of saying this, but I'll have to say it again. The NASA budget is four-tenths of one penny on a tax dollar. If I held up the tax dollar and I cut horizontally into it four-tenths of one percent of its width, it doesn't even get you into the ink. So I will not accept a statement that says we can't afford it. Do you realize that the $850 billion bank bailout. That sum of money is greater than the entire 50-year running budget of NASA. And so when someone says, we don't have enough money for this space probe, I'm asking, no, it's not that you don't have enough money. It's that the distribution of money that you're spending is warped. And In some way that you are removing the only thing that gives people something to dream about tomorrow. The, the, the home of tomorrow, the city of tomorrow, transportation of tomorrow, all that ended in the, in, in the 1970s. After we stopped going to the moon, it all ended. We stopped dreaming. And so I worry that decisions that Congress makes doesn't factor in the consequences of those decisions on tomorrow. They're playing for the quarterly report, they're playing for the next election cycle, and that is mortgaging the actual future of this nation. Tomorrow's gone. If you double NASA's budget, right now it's a half a penny on a dollar, make it a penny. Go ahead, make it a penny. Go ahead, be bold.
That would be enough to go to Mars soon with people and go to, back to the moon and on to asteroids. NASA, as best as I can judge, is a force of nature like none other. other. And so what worries me is that if you take away the man program, a program which if you advance frontiers, you make heroes are made. There's a force operating on the educational pipeline that will stimulate the formation of scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and technologists.